Hi everybody, Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath, and welcome to episode 214 of our Managing Uncertainty podcast. In this episode, I wanna ask you what you want to be known for in your career. There's an article in this morning's Wall Street Journal, and as I'm recording this, it's September 2023, there's an article in today's Wall Street Journal about how career plans and career paths have really changed a lot. And one of their experts' pieces of advice is to think about instead, instead of thinking about moving up from step to step to step on the corporate ladder or the public sector ladder, if that's your thing, is to think about what you want to be known for. And there's a lot of different possible answers to this question. They suggest maybe you want to be known as a decisive leader. Maybe you want to be known as someone who is a strong presenter. Um, but I want to tell you what I think most business continuity crisis management professionals should be known for, what you should strive to be known for. The ones that I have respected the most throughout my career have focused in this area, and that is to be a good business partner. A good business partner to your stakeholders and the overall business that you're trying to support within your organization. And you're probably, Brian, why is that so damn important? I don't understand. I'm you know, thinking about you know, being a strong crisis leader, about being a good coach and mentor for my team. And I totally agree, all of those are important things for you to do. But the business continuity and crisis management leaders, the resilience leaders that I have the most respect for, and the ones that I think, the business leaders that I think respected me the most, would tell you that one of the reasons they did is because I was a strong partner for them and their business. I think this is where a lot of folks in our industry suffer. It's where we struggle because we're focused so much inward on the team. How do I do a better BIA? How do I tweak my business continuity plan template? Why don't people do the things that I want them to do and commit to advancing the program? And I would flip all that logic on its head. I think the challenge is about resilience leaders and resilience professionals being better partners to their overall team, to the overall business. After all, as you've heard me articulate before several times in different ways on this podcast, that's what we're all here for. That's the part of the business that makes money. So if you were to ask me when I was internal to a company and I was running you know, the resilience program, global crisis management, business continuity and intelligence, what did I want to be known for? I wanted to be known as a good business partner. And I think that's what helps you be successful as a resilience leader. I think it's part of what allows you to grow and mature your program and obtain resources for your program is because you are helping your business leaders achieve their strategic objectives by providing effective, the effective ability to withstand those shocks to the organization, to withstand those disruptions that occur, whether that's a natural disaster or a violent incident or a cyber attack or the next pandemic, this is how we contribute to the overall business by being a good business partner and leader of the resilience function in that organization. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.